Hello everyone, I'm Mike Levin of MikeLevinSEO.com and by the end of today I'll actually have a better set of barebone files in place to become the MikeLevinSEO.com website than the one line hello world file that's currently there. Now the way, the way to do this properly these days is to think about a responsive template and there's a project out there on GitHub called Skeleton and Skeleton is all about a very minimal HTML5 template that dynamically adapts to your media form factor so it looks good on everything down to mobile and it's just a few files that you can download from this link but now that we're using a remote server things change a little bit as far as downloading files. You don't really have to download locally. You can just get that URL, copy link address, and we go over to our terminal. I had logged out of the Raspberry Pi. It's probably booted up again by now when I cloned the SD card. So let's SSH. Oh, I'm gonna do it a little differently. Root at mikelevinseo.com. I don't even have to remember the internal IP numbers. Yay, DNS system. Hey, all right, it's working. We answer yes to do the key exchange. It looks like a different server than it did before. We are logged in and we are in our home directory. So we can ls and see the index.html file that we created there before. We can look at its contents with the less command. And there's really nothing there except a headline with hello world. So we don't really need that, but it was added with git, so we're going to remove it with git. git rm index.html. Okay. Now the reason we're removing it is because I know the skeleton package we're about to get also has its own index.html and we don't want a collision. How do we get it? Well, there's a command called wget. And then we paste in the location from GitHub. Okay, so it named it master. That seems to be something that happens pretty commonly when you wget from GitHub without giving it a destination file name. I happen to know that that master file, if we ls it, is a, um, a tarball, they call it. So it's got two levels of compression. Tar hyphen xvf will undo it all. And you just give it the file name and it does it all right in location. We have a uh, directory there now. And we want the contents of that directory one level up. So if I were to ls uh, dh and show you the contents there, you can see that there's a uh, index.html file and two other directories, images and style sheets. So we want all that one level up. So we simply mv from where we're at, dhg all of its contents to our current directory, ls. And there we go. And we can now remove the original directory. Cannot remove, it is a directory. Well, when you remove a directory, you have to give it a hyphen R for a cursive parameter. And now, nice and clean. And I am not currently running PyGreen, but I can do that by typing I green serve port 80. And we go over to the browser. MikeLevinSEO.com. Website is not available. It might be taking a second. Yep, it just has to spin up. Do a refresh. There it is, skeleton 
on a Raspberry Pi model B plus running as a headless web server and a much better starting point for Mike Levin SEO than what it was before. If I view source here, you can get a little better idea of what's going on. Just a few style sheets that comprise skeleton. And now we go back to here and I'll control C out of high green and we'll do just a little more cleanup, removing the file called master. And we removed the old index.html from the git repository. So I'm gonna do git add the new one. And I'm gonna just also add the whole images directory and the whole style sheets directory. Now normally I would avoid uh, adding uh, entire projects to other GitHub projects, but Skeleton is really so few files and the chances are I'm gonna go and customize a bunch of them there's no harm in doing it here. You can consider it truly part of the Mike Levin SEO website. Now that I've done that, I need to do a git commit message added skeleton. And you see all the files added. And now we do, oh, I should do a before and after, but a git push is what I have in mind. I won't hit enter yet. I'll open another tab, I'll go to GitHub, and go into the project that we just created, Mike Levin SEO, and you can see it's only just got one commit right now, so that's the before, and this is the beauty now of this type of work uh, flow. If you wanted to keep this code private, you use Bitbucket instead of GitHub, and that's really the only difference. Uh, username. And there we go. Go over here, do a refresh, two commits. Now the work will be forever safe. Now GitHub itself isn't 100% safe, but one of the beauties of Git is that every copy you make, every time you clone a project, it is a commit by commit history of the entire project. So if you just clone it one or two more places, maybe onto a different computer, maybe on your, your laptop plus your Raspberry Pi, you have your code just sort of migrating around with an entire history of the entire project. And that's the beauty of GitHub and Git. And so what I'll probably do now is go home pretty soon and simply do a remote login using the SSH command from my Mac at home and start doing remote maintenance of a Raspberry Pi server from a different location than the server itself, just like it was a cloud or a rack mounted system. I guess the last thing I want to say today before parting is that this is the road less traveled I'm taking you. And what makes it worth it? Python makes it worth it. Uh, some of the other roads people might compel you down at this point is node.js and JavaScript, which is all the rage and is a completely valid choice. But I find Python to be just a much better all-around language for a new person getting started, even for an advanced person. Uh, I'll have plenty of other articles and uh, videos discussing the nuanced reasons, but suffice to say is that it's a, a love-worthy language, and it's going to be really easy now to jump into all the other tiny little projects, be it web hosting, which is just one category of programming, which we focused on today, but also you can write Python scripts that run on a scheduled basis and uh, commands that you just type off when you need them to start a web crawl. And it's just a wonderful all around language. And if you follow my instructions, your Raspberry Pi becomes sort of your base of operations, your easily replicated base of operations for all your programming needs. Thanks for joining me today, and I hope to talk to you soon. And as usual, please subscribe.